right, today we're going to talk about the necessity of getting this right early, as in your first job. You know, right now, you have a massive life advantage. But over time, this advantage will vastly diminish. See, time is of the essence. What's so urgent? Unleashing the power of compound interest. It's more profound and effective the earlier you begin to build wealth in your career and your life. You know, Einstein said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. We briefly covered this topic in regard to compound interest working for you or against you in a previous lesson. Now, let's take a deeper dive. Compound interest is like a snowball rolling downhill. We all know what that is. It grows exponentially, getting far larger with every re revolution going down the hill. The bigger it gets, the more snow it adds to each revolution. Well, compound interest does this by not only receiving interest on the monies that you've invested, but also interest on the interest you've already earned to date. And the longer you go, the bigger that snowball gets. All the while, you continue to invest with every payday. And that fuels this magnificent wealth creation engine. And we're gonna to try to bring that to life today. Know this, time is the most important catalyst in this equation. Now hold that thought for a while and let me dig into some other stuff. As you try to get your arms around all this, it's best to begin with the end in mind. Where are you going? What are you aiming for? What's your long-term goal? I mean, think about it. Try to answer that in your head. Well, let me take a cut at it. One, more money coming in during retirement via your income-producing assets than the cost of you being you. Okay, it costs you so much to, to live, but you have more money coming in and you're running a surplus. Number two, an undemoted lifestyle, giving you the same or more income as you had during your working years when you no longer work. That's pretty good. And you know, some people move to a small apartment or they, they, they downsize their life. They go from two cars to one car. They do all of this stuff because they didn't put enough money aside. Now, you may choose to do those things, but, but you, know, you, uh, you do them because you want to, not because you have to. And number three, becoming economically strong in your latter years as your body one day become physically frail. There's things in your 60s and 70s and 80s that, that you know, are more frail or certainly not as uh, powerful as when you're in your 20s and 30s. So you want to go ahead and be economically strong as you enter into that phase of your life. All right, let's dig in. Let me try to give you a vivid view of the necessity of starting early. This is a story of the twin sisters, Angelina and Betty. They're 35 years old. They moved away from their childhood homes and they live in different cities. And their mom invites them home for Thanksgiving. They both fly in and on the afternoon of Thanksgiving, the twins come downstairs. They're greeted by these incredible aromas coming out of the kitchen because you know, we all know nobody does Thanksgiving like your mom does. That's what you grew up on. So they enter the kitchen and ask mom, what can we do to help? And she says, nothing, nothing. I got everything under control here. Now, why don't the two of you go out to the dining room? You'd never get a chance to talk and catch up a bit and crack open another bottle of wine. No one's driving tonight. So that's what they do. And they're making some small talk and then Angelina, she leans over and she gives Betty a tap and says, hey, are you doing anything for retirement? She said, retirement? Retirement? Are you kidding? We're young. That's decades away. Then she thought for a moment and she asked Angelina, are you? She said, I'm not doing a lot, but ever since I've been 25, 
I've been sending $2,000 a year away with a stockbroker, conservatively invested. In some years I make money, a couple years I lost a couple of bucks. One year I really crushed it, I did fantastic. But I, I, all in all, I'm doing okay, but I keep all the money in, I never withdraw. And, but that's about it. With that, Mon comes in with the dinner and the conversation changes. Well, they both fly home, and you know how it is in the aftermath of a great conversation, you start thinking about things. And Betty's at her, back at her home, and she's thinking to herself, maybe Angelina's right. Maybe I should be socking some more money away. So she calls a broker, and like Angela, starts giving the broker $2,000 a year. Now Angelina's back home, and the conversation's playing in her head as well. So she thinks, maybe Betty's right. We are young. Hey, you know, Betty lives better than I do. She has a better wardrobe. She has a nicer apartment. She just got back from Cabo. Hell, I've never been out of the country. So she stops investing. She keeps her money in, but no new annual deposits. Let's see what happens. So Angelina begins at 25 and invests $2,000 a year. Betty begins at 35 and invests $2,000 a year. Now Angelina stopped at 34, so she did that for 10 years, whereas Betty uh, stops at 65. Total invested, $62,000 for Betty, okay? But regrettably, Angelina, who had a jump on the system, invested less than a third, so about $20,000. At 65, Betty has $225,000 in change. And at 65, Angelina has, what's this, $260,000 in change. Total gain, over $205,000 for Betty, and 240,000 and change for Angelina. This is incredible. Now, if Angelina hadn't stopped and she had kept putting that $2,000 away into retirement, she'd have over half a million dollars right now. And that's assuming the stock market's gonna return 7.5%. And again, there's no prediction on that, but I, I think that's a, interesting estimate and but you you do some research and figure out what you want to put in so i mean here you had angelina started early and then stopped spent less than a third or you know accumulated less than a third in her in her uh, brokerage account and she ends up with more money at the end you know if this is where if i was if you were in my live class and i thought it would help i'd get down on my knees and i would beg you I beg you to start at your first job. You need this power of compound interest that Angelina enjoyed. Well, but let's take a look at her. She didn't do everything right. Angelina didn't start at 22, but you will. She didn't even approach the right annual contribution. According to the Social Security National Wage Index, the average wage in 2020 was $55,629. If she'd invested 15%, remember the experts say 12 to 15%, she would have been investing over $8,000 annually. So she's investing less than a quarter of what she needs to. She also stopped contributing at 34. Well, hopefully, you don't do that. You get on a plan and you're driving this forward. And you know, there was no mention of an emergency fund and we've already learned how critical that is for protecting your nest egg, kind of an insurance policy. The lesson, have a plan, start early, and be consistent over the span of your career. I just showed you the power of compound interest. Let me show you a couple more tools will that help you get your arms around all of this. Introducing the rule of 72. It's a tool to calculate the number of years it takes to double your money at a specific rate of return. 
It's not perfectly accurate, but it's awfully darn close. You start with the number 72, then you divide uh, that by your annual rate of return, and it shows you how many years it takes to double your money. So let's take a look at an example. We estimate the stock market is going to grow at 7.5%. Okay, it, it may vary, so you decide what number you want to punch in, but that's what we've been using through the course of this class, and let's use it for this example too. So 72 divided by 7.5%, your money will double in 9.6 years. So if you begin at 22, and if you work and invest until you're 65, that says you work for about 43 years. So you have the potential to double your initial money nearly four and a half times. Money that you put in later probably is larger because it usually is a percentage and as you get deeper into your career, you're making more money. However, that money will have fewer years to grow and double. So the message is start early as in your first job. And if you're already in the workforce as you're listening to this, then just go ahead and dig in, but time is the essence and you have to start now. This puts time on your side. Another tool about compound interest is the calculator hack. Take out your smartphone. Put in the amount you think you're gonna contribute for long-term wealth creation in a year. Now let's use the estimated stock market growth again at 7.5%. So you take the annual amount times 1.075. Now start with your age and count from this age to retirement. For every year, hit the equal sign on the smartphone. All right, here's an example. Let's look at Angelina. Type in $2,000. Remember, that's what she was putting away, and you multiply it times 1.075. Say she started at 22 and plans to work to 65. Now count by tapping the equal sign. 22, 23, 24, 25. Do you see how exciting this gets? Warning, the big variable, as we said before, is time. You can't squander your 20s. Both, remember, earlier in this class, you, you, you can't squander professionally. You're building your reputation. You're putting wind to your back professionally, and that's terrific. But also with compound interest, you've got to get things started early. You can't squander your 20s. It's go time when you enter the workforce. Yet according to the morning consult, only 39% started saving for retirement in their 20s. That means more than half of the people you know are likely to be doing the wrong things. Remember, the opposite of success is not failure, it's conformity. Look to your left and right, and if you're doing what they're doing, something's wrong. Only 39% started saving in their 20s for retirement. Another 25% began in their 30s. Another 15% in their 40s another 6% in their 50s. So now it's decision time. What do you intend to do? Before you're a new hire and you're filling out all this paperwork and you're deciding uh, you know, what I'm going to do, have a plan and then stick to it. Let's use the student retirement calculator to bring this to life. Remember your high school chemistry lessons? In every experiment, it's best to have only one variable. So that's what we did here. The student retirement calculator runs five scenarios and we're gonna use them for this exercise. We kept everything the same except for the age you begin so we can make a good comparison. We used earnings from Ohio University student via Payscale's college salary report. Ending age to make contributions, 65. Retirement age of 65. Initial contribution, we started at 6%. In this assumption, we've said the employer is going to match something uh, for the first 6% you put in. And eventually getting to 15%. Remember, 12 to 15%, so we're going to swing for the fences. 
and we decided to put the whole match on top of this. That's what this graph is going to go ahead and show. The market returns 7.5%, but you dial down that return at retirement to 5.5%. The calculator does that. Why would you do that? Well, you're in the growth mode at the stage you're at in life. But as you get closer to extracting money or investments to start living off of, you can go ahead and make your portfolio much more conservative. And this is where you need a broker to really move you along. They even have funds that go with your age where they go ahead and make them less volatile. So if all of a sudden you hit a rough patch in the economy and there's great inflation or there's a recession, um, you're not forced to drag uh, money out of this winding down portfolio, it protects you a little bit, but get some advice on this. You decide you're going to extract 4.5%, so you're taking not all of the growth that you plan to do, so the, your, your portfolio will still grow. Cost of living increase in retirement, about 3% is what we're estimating. That can go up and that can go down over the cost of your career, uh, the span of your career, but, but let's just say 3%. So the variables here, in this experiment are going to be the age you start. So we ran it at 22, then 32, then 42, then 52, and 62. And let's see what we've learned. You started at 22, you have over $5 million invested. You know, I wish somebody had taught this lesson to me when I was your age. And I think your parents probably feel the same way, and most people in my generation wish we had done this differently. At 32, if you started then, you'd have just over $3 million. Look at the penalty. By starting 10 years later, you're gone with uh, $2 million. At 42, you can look for a return of about $1.5 million. At 52, only 613,000 at 62, just over 100 grand. Huge differences. You see the real time benefits of starting at your first job. And also, I might add, when you look at these numbers, it underscores the penalty of starting late. The key question as you move forward is can an average worker with an average career trajectory, who seeks work-life balance, uh, can they get pension-like income by the end of their career? And the answer is yes, if, if, not to be a broker record, they don't squander their 20s. You have learned, you know, it's a combination of staying employed, thriving in that employment, and replacing it swiftly if need be because your income, what you make a year, is the fuel that feeds the wealth creation engine. While being wise with the money you earn and funding a plan that you understand. And, and I think what we're talking about here is a plan that you can get your arms around because you have a better shot of sticking with it if you really understand it. To make this more doable, let me give you a step-by-step -step formula for starting at your first job. And I'll run for a student, again, from Ohio University. But when you dig in, go to Payscale and look up your school. Or if you're already in the workforce, you can get real numbers by knowing, hey, well, you started at entry level. Where was that number? And what do people make around 42 years old? And you punch that into the calculator. Alternatively, you can go out on the internet and find all sorts of other calculators. The better that serve you, hey, I'm happy, just go use that. The student retirement calculator was built to serve college students. We are in the process of releasing a tutorial video that goes into great detail on the student retirement calculator, so stay tuned for that. Okay, the six steps to financial independence. Number one, you want to build an emergency fund. So if something goes bump in the night, you're getting some bad news financially, you don't have to reach into your long-term assets. You've got a reservoir or an insurance policy, if you will, to go ahead and fund you know, the inevitable ups and downs that can happen over the course of your career as you start to invest. You set your initial contribution. And again, the initial contribution 
is at minimum the maximum of what your employer will match. Number three, you set your goal percentage, 12 to 15 percent. We're going for 15 percent, and we're also going to put the match on top. You pledge to, you know, hold your lifestyle flat until you hit your goal percentage. You never apply assets to expenses. Take the pledge. I will never go ahead and drain my 401k to buy a car. I will never drain my 401k to get rid of credit card debt. If you have a problem with credit card debt, go up to Dave Ramsey's site, learn around about the debt snowball and employ that logic and that plan. It's terrific. And number six, you want to navigate to debt free, at least by retirement, hopefully before. So we ran two scenarios with the student retirement calculator. The first one in the red column and the second one in the blue column. For this example, all variables are the same except the employer match. Column number one, the red column shows a match and column number two shows no employer match because some employers don't do it. Okay, so, but most do. Okay, so you really want to understand that. Again, the experts say 12 to 15 percent. So we chose 15. And so I know we're being a little aggressive here, and we elected to put the match on top. That's aggressive too. But if you wanted to dial it down and, and do it differently, you can run that on the calculator and make those changes. This is where the calculator starts to work its magic. Because it estimates that you will receive just under a 3% annual raise. And if you direct that to your long-term wealth creation, your 401k, your Roth, your IRA, whatever you're going to put it into, in this case, in four years, you have fully funded. You started at six, you take your raises, you start to push it into your uh, wealth creation, 401k, if you will. Uh, and then in four years, you're at 15%. Pretty terrific. And you have the full force of compound interest. It's called the Angelina effect, what she did. You've got the wind to your back financially. Stay true to this formula. 15% always goes into long-term wealth creation, no matter how much money you make or what stage you're at in your career. And 85% of any incremental raise that comes your way, if you just got a raise, you got promoted and had more money or went to another company and got higher compensation, 85% goes to enhancing your lifestyle. Now you're off because of your early actions to a great, powerful plan. The first graph shows a predicted amount under these circumstances. Again, this is only a prediction. No calculator can do this uh, perfectly. But wow, the average student with an average income from a state school amassed over $5 million. But again, I found that teaching this that it's hard for a young person to really know the impact of those funds. What's easier to relate to is how your retirement income can compare with the money you've been making on an annual basis. So like last year, what did I make? Now what, what can I pull out and, uh, and fund from my income producing assets? The next graph shows you how to compare retirement income versus working income. It estimates that you're making $142,000 a year at retirement. That's during your last year of employment. Now, welcome to retirement. You can pay yourself $240,000 a year uh, if you had a match, and that's a 69% raise. You know, pensions don't do that, but you're, you've created this machine that can serve you well. And $167,000 a year you can pay yourself if you didn't have a match. That's still an 18% raise. Talk about enough discretionary time and discretionary money to follow your heart's desire. But you might ask, isn't this too good to be true? Won't I run out of money? I mean, I, 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 I'm just nervous. Actually, no. The next graph shows you, estimates the size of your portfolio over time. You're in position to create a lot of wealth. 
and play with different scenarios then chart your course this is something that can really be something when you lean back in future years you're going to be glad you got off to this great start so i wish you luck and i'll see you next time